Hey folks, welcome back. Hope you've been doing well out there. So I just got off an awesome call with a client and I thought I would take this momentum and this good flowing feeling I've had and channel it into a video for you guys. And I thought what we would talk about today is something I know you guys are all super interested in. I've been meaning to talk about here more on the channel and that is resourcing and what does it actually mean to resource yourself? What does the big picture of resourcing look like in your life? You know, what exactly is resourcing? How do you go about doing it? What, what is resourcing? Like, let's just talk about it. Let's understand this more deeply because I know this is from my point of view, an incredibly key, important concept for you to understand, and yet is something that is uh, kind of vague and not widely understood for people who are trying to self-heal or people who are learning about therapy or certain whole therapy modalities don't even really explore this concept at all. So let me unpack what it means to resource, and I'm going to show you a little bit of a graphic that I've made to start to explain kind of resourcing both from the broadest sense down to the most specific sense. So let's get into it. So before we go ahead and dive in, looking at the graphic here, let me just take a couple minutes and explain what the heck I mean by resourcing. So again, this is a concept I was taught in my trainings. And the basic idea is that a resource, and if we're talking kind of healing or growth or therapy or anything like that, a resource is gonna be anything that you can draw upon or access, whether that is an emotion, a mindset, a core belief, a somatic feeling in your body, a memory, uh, a thing you've learned, a skill you have, you know, so these would be internal resources, right? Beliefs, states, these kinds of things. But also we could think of external resources in terms of relationships, safe places, practices you have, lifestyle things you do, money, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There are, there are external resources as well, but a resource is essential as anything we can draw upon that helps us with the problem. Right? So this is anything that helps to transform the problem or uh, empower us around the problem or resolves the problem or reduces the problem or in some way uh, empowers, supports, and, and, and holds us up to be able to engage and resolve the problem more easily. There's a much deeper understanding here about the relationship between resources and problems that I'll be getting into here on the channel over the years and it's at the core of the work that i do and it's really at the core of you know debatably all kind of transformative change work whether that's you know therapy or hypnosis or good coaching or you know good personal development or even just you had an awesome psychedelic experience and something changed for you and you've never been the same in the best sense where you've improved and you've grown and you've healed in any of these situations there is some bit of resource being involved in the situation. But again, that's a bigger discussion for another day. But just for our purposes here, what I want you to really get is that, you know, a resource is anything that basically supports you in working with a problem or in making the change you want to make or growing the way you want to grow, right? Generally, we're going to be looking at the broad picture here, you know, and we're going to also be looking at more acutely and specifically what that might mean so that you can understand how to resource yourself. Because this is, you know, the thing I want you to get, the thing I really want you to take away from this video is resourcing isn't just about one particular thing. Like it's not about one therapy technique. It's not about just psilocybin or just MDMA. It's not about just this one thing you could learn at a personal development seminar. Resourcing is a whole approach to life. It is a paradigm inside which you live. It is a set and a series of things you do that bring, you know, well-being and goodness and strength and thriving into your life. So it's a life strategy as much as it is a, a specific thing. And so the, the more resourced you are, generally speaking, the better you're going to feel, the better your life is going to be. So I want you to get this. Resourcing is not just like a one little thing you can do. It is, it's a whole life project. So with that being said, let's look at this graphic and we'll unpack it a bit here. Hopefully this will make a little more sense for you. Okay, so here we go with my uh, kind of cheesy, kind of generic graphic here. Bear with me. Uh, again, I'm not a graphic designer and in a perfect world, eventually I'll have a, a more you know unique graphic to show you to explain this. But this is what we've got. And if you're wondering, you know, why is it that the triangle or pyramid is upside down? That's because that's the shape of the template that I had available to me. So thank you for bearing with me. The general point I want you to get about this graphic and what we're going to look at here is that there are kind of different degrees 
of what we could think of as, as acuteness or focused resourcing versus kind of broad resourcing. So there's kind of broad, vague, general resources that you can create in your life. That's going to be here at the top, you know, where it says broad, of course. There are kind of medium level resources that are perhaps a little more specific for you, but uh, are not entirely specific. And then there are going to be uh, acute, more specific interventions that are really designed to resource you, right? So this is not a, a comprehensive list. This is just what I brainstormed. I will say if you're someone who's hyper logical and needs everything to make perfect sense, this is just a version one of this graphic. And some of these things, you know, I've had some feedback on don't quite make coherent sense. Uh, depending on how you would sort them or how you would think about it. So you might disagree with some of the placements of where I put things here. So, you know, fair warning on that. Uh, and in general, the basic thing is we're looking at, you know, broad interventions to acute interventions here. And the broad ones generally are going to be the easiest to access, the, the lowest hanging fruit of resources. And as we get more specific and more acute in the types of interventions and, and resources, the more we're likely to uh, find that these are harder to find, more rare, less well known, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So uh, without further ado, let's start to unpack this a bit. Right. So starting with the broad here, in order to resource yourself, these are the things I would do first. These are, again, uh, cheap or free, easiest to achieve, um, the most doable. Right. So I would start with looking at the most obvious, which is cleaning up your diet exercising to some degree, you know, in a way that works for you, that is healthy and helps balance you and getting good light exposure, you know, balancing the amount of sunlight you're getting. In other words, don't just be a shut in on the internet, you know, on, on your computer all the time, get outside, breathe fresh air, get sunlight in your eyes. It regulates your sleep cycle. It regulates your hormone cycle. These are all, again, cheap to free, you know, you're presumably already affording food somehow. So can you just clean up your diet, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So let's start with diet, exercise, light exposure. These are huge bang for your buck in terms of, you know, helping to create that baseline of being more regulated and more resourced. From there, I would look at, you know, stress to ease ratio. I'd look at spending time in nature right? So getting out and hiking or getting out in the ocean or river, these kinds of things. Uh, socializing. Socializing is very regulating for the nervous system. It is a huge resource to you, even if you're not, you know, processing what's going on in your life or talking about specific issues, just generally being social will regulate you and resource you, right? So all of these things will help your nervous system to feel more supported, more safe, easier, right? The stress to ease ratio, for a lot of you, that might seem like a really um, daunting thing to look at, but I think this is an important thing to start to think about. How much time do you spend stressed out versus how much time do you spend in feeling ease? And what can you do to start to tilt that balance into a, a better balance for you. Uh, I would look at your health. I would look at, you know, do you have any weird, funny health things going on? Is there something you've been needing to take care of that you're not? Do you have any kind of chronic inflammation, Any anything like that? I would deal with your health because again, that's going to resource you and regulate you in a way that, you know, therapy isn't, for example. I'd look at where you live, location. Do you like where you live? Do you like the neighborhood you're in? Do you like the house you're in? Do you like the city you're in? Do you like the country you're in? Do you feel safe? Do you feel, you know, obviously we could all kind of nitpick and find things that we don't like about our location, but in general, are you happy where you're at or are you unhappy where you're at? And if you're unhappy, is that something you could change? Because again, that has a huge impact on how you feel and how resourced you are, right? If I live in, you know, like I, I used to live in a small town in New Mexico, you know, kind of far away from any big city or any culture that resonated with what I'm interested in. In a situation like that, it's, you know, harder to feel resourced. It's harder to feel like there are people who are going to understand me, who are going to be on my side, who are going to help me. It's harder to feel connected to things that make me feel alive and, you know, thriving and excited, etc. So look at location. 
I'd also look at culture, right? What's the culture you're in and is it a fit for you? Is it a match for your personality and your value system and who you are, right? Uh, what's your family culture, right? What's the local culture around you in the, in the city or the town you live in? You know, what cultures are you involved in that kind of affirm your way of life or what you believe in as being important? Do you go to church? Do you, um, are you involved in a, a certain sports culture? Are you involved in like a creative arts culture, right? What kind of cultures are you engaged in? And how does that resource you or not resource you, right? Another big one here that a lot of people kind of, you know, uh, disregard as adults, but it's actually huge is play, right? Play is something you can do, you know, for, again, for free or for cheap that really lets off a lot of stress that puts you back in touch with the joy of being alive, right? Are you playing? Do you have play in your life? Whether that's verbal play, like banter and, and you know, chatting with people and socializing, or whether that's a sports league, or whether that's gaming, or whether, you know, playing music with people, there's all kinds of forms of play, right? But do you play, right? And how often do you play enough, right? When's the last time you got out and played? You know, maybe that's something you need. Uh, another thing here, hobbies. So again, hobbies can be a huge source of, of resource in person's life. I, a lot of my clients will tell me that one of their hobbies is the thing that kind of keeps them feeling positive or keeps them feeling optimistic or excited or engaged, right? So I'd look at your hobbies. Uh, I'd look at, do you travel? You know, um, do you do you have vacations? Do you have getaways, whether it's road trips or whether it's international travel, uh, you know, flying to the a different part of your country? Do you do you travel? Do you take vacations? Do you take time off from work and unplug and go, you know, celebrate life, right? Same with parties. Do you get out? Do you go socialize and celebrate? Do you go to, you know, concerts? Do you go to, you know, social events? Do you go to dinners? Do you, um, you know, go to things like Burning Man? Like, do you have a way to get out and let loose and flow? These all resource you, right? These help you to access positive emotions and feel good, feel connected and let go of stress, right? Another big one, that's, you know, again, a little more getting a little more acute here is self-education. You spend time learning how to, you know, do the things you want to do, how to achieve the next thing that you want to achieve or, um, you know, get better at a hobby or, you know, understand yourself better, you know, personal development, self-education, spiritual self-education, psychological, emotional, um, you know, historical. Do you read? Are you learning? right? This is another huge thing that resources you, right? Because as you learn new things, you understand yourself and life and the world in a different way. And again, that can really resource you. Uh, another big one here, you know, as we start to move into the more medium, right? So the broad, again, these are the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest to start to achieve. And the more you start to build these into your life, the more you will feel resourced, right? But as we go a little more specific here into the medium, there's kind of a medium range that isn't quite specific and acute, but are a little more customized to you and might start to get a little more esoteric, a little more, you know, less uh, pop culture, shall we say, right? So, you know, a big one is supplements. Are you exploring supplements and any supplements that your body might need or that might, um, you know, properly resource you to feel the way you want to feel to do the things you want to do, right? Or in general to feel more balanced, right? So I've definitely used supplements a lot in my own personal growth path to, you know, uh, calm anxiety, for example, or get my cognitive function a little sharper, or um, just improve my overall health and strength. Supplements are awesome for resourcing you. Um, these are often great tools that again, you know, because you're consuming something, it may not be the deepest way to resource yourself, but these are awesome tools to help you to access resources. Obviously with psychedelics, we could debatably call microdosing a supplement that can really resource you. So you, you get the point here. Supplements can be a huge way to resource yourself. Um, therapy, right? So this is another one, right? So therapy in general, 
you know, can be a huge resource for you, right? Obviously, this depends on your relationship with the therapist, the therapist themselves, the type of therapy, the timing in your life, if you can afford it, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons why therapy may not be a good resource for you. But in general, you know, therapy is going to be a huge resource right up there with supplements and, you know, whatnot. That's going to help you to be able to um, feel supported, connected, know how to start to work through these things, et cetera, et cetera. I would say kind of getting more specific from there, we look more at like daily rituals and practices, right? So this is something that in the kind of personal development world you see a lot of, see a lot of emphasis on what's your morning routine? What's your daily ritual? Do you always journal? Do you always blah, 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 right? Um, I would say in general, you want to have these in place so that when life gets hard, when struggle pops up, uh, when stress pops up, you have something to fall back on that holds you up and helps you to feel good, that helps you to feel strong, that helps you to feel uh, balanced and able to meet the day and meet the moment, right? So for, you know, for different people, this could be different things. This could be walking or hiking. This could be journaling. This could be, you know, meditation, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you start to get more specific down from daily rituals into, yeah, meditation being a huge one that resources people. This is what I've been talking on the channel a lot about lately, which, and for good reason, it's one of the missing pieces for a lot of us. And what I see over and over and over is when people meditate, their ability to work with stuff coming up inside themselves, their ability to see without getting totally overwhelmed by emotion, whatever needs seeing in ourselves becomes so much easier. So that's a huge resource, right? That's a huge place where you're you're going to uh, be able to draw on that, right? Another big one is spiritual practices. And, you know, meditation is a spiritual practice, but I would say concurrent to that might be like breathwork practices um, or mantra practices, or visualization practices, more specific spiritual practices that connect you to your spiritual core, to the spiritual layer of life, the spiritual aspect of life. And that can resource you in a deep, deep way, right? Like when we are in touch with our spiritual essence and the spiritual layer of life, it helps us to deal with the specifics because we know there's something deeper and more important and more profound. There's a deeper truth a deeper layer of reality than simply the kind of specifics of whatever we might be challenged with, right? So for example, internally, if I know that I'm that there's a, a layer of me that is deeper than my mind or deeper than my emotions or deeper than my identity, that there's an aspect to me that is spiritual, that it, that that is transcends that, it makes her makes it then easier to go and work on my mind or work on my emotions or work on these aspects of my experience because I know they don't define me in my totality, that I'm more than that, that I'm deeper than that, right? Okay, take a little water here. So that becomes a resource, right? Uh, so again, I hope this is this is making sense to you, right? We ideally want, we want to have as many of these in place as possible because we're going to feel more capable to address fear, stress, you know, healing challenges, trauma, whatever it is that we need to do. Kind of coming down into more acute, more specific from spiritual and meditation is touch and feeling seen and heard. So really as we move, you know, from supplements and therapy, those are kind of, you know, outside in kind of things. And then daily ritual and practices, that starts to be more an internal thing we do meditation, spiritual practices, we're moving internal here. And with touch and feeling seen, seen and heard, these are the language of the nervous system, right? So this is where we start to pivot to things that our nervous system needs to feel right, right? So there's less about things we do, more about experiences that are really important to the nervous system, right? Safe touch, like this, you know, makes me sad to talk about, honestly, because for so many of us, we either grew up without safe touch, like it's just, it wasn't a part of our family culture. It wasn't something we got a lot. So it's kind of foreign to us. Or, you know, maybe we did get it, you know, a bit as, you know, as kids, we got cuddles, we got, you know, snuggles and safe touch, things like that. But we maybe don't have that so much as adults as we'd like. There are a lot of people out there who are under 
undernourished when it comes to safe touch. And I would say that at a nervous system level, when you get touch from people in a safe way, in a consensual way, and I would say, you know, sure that includes sexual touch, but let's say non-sexual touch being an important piece of this, just someone giving you a shoulder rub or a pat on the back or a cozy hug or these kinds of things, physical connection resources the nervous system in a really profound, powerful way. It's really important, right? And it's something that a lot of us are missing. Another big one, right along with safe touch, is feeling seen and feeling heard. So if you've been watching my channel recently, you know that I've been kind of like, kind of somewhat vaguely talking a lot about how super important, um, you know, connection and attunement and safe relating is to the nervous system as a major input for creating safety, right? And the most basic place where most of us need that, the thing we need that most of us, and, and I could unpack this, I could, I could make videos, in fact, I'm making a course about this, is feeling seen and feeling heard, right? And unfortunately, the world we live in, a lot of people don't know how to convey to you properly that you are seen and you are heard and you are understood. So most of us run around in our day-to-day -day lives with this chronic feeling of not feeling seen and not feeling heard and feeling like we desperately need that, right? Like we, like we either feel frustrated about that or we feel lonely about that or we feel desperate about that. There's reactions we can have to that, but the underlying thing is that we don't feel seen and we don't feel heard. And what I experience over and over is when people, whether it's my for myself, my nervous system, or helping others, when people feel seen and heard, when we really feel seen and heard, it is so deeply resourcing to our nervous system. So again, we're moving towards a more specific kind of acute resourcing. So feeling seen and feeling heard is a much more personal thing right? Someone has to actively engage with you and demonstrate quite clearly that they're really actually getting what you're putting out, right? Which is a so much more specific than generally cleaning up your diet or exercising or getting good light exposure, good sleep, these kinds of things, right? So again, we're moving down into specifics here. So why is touch and why is feeling seen and heard important? What do they communicate to the nervous system? They communicate a sense of connection, right? So connection is a deep resource for the nervous system. We are born as social beings. We are wired to be social animals, not unlike, you know, other primates or like, you know, wolf packs or like lion prides. We are social animals, right? And because of this, that sense of connection is really at the heart of what creates that feeling of, you know, belonging, being a part of the tribe, being um, safe, right? And so this sense of connection is what feeling seen and heard and being touched safely and all this, this is really what all this delivers. Even spiritual practices, meditation, right? Therapy, these are all pointing back towards feeling connected, right? And this is the thing where sadly, way too many human beings are kind of starving for this and don't feel this and need more of this, right? And we get, when we don't have connection, we get a little weird, we get a little desperate, we get a little twitchy, we get a little uncomfortable, you know, we get sad, we get lonely, we get frustrated, we get angsty, right? Because we are wired for a sense of connection. This deeply resources the nervous system. And so this is something you want to work at. This is something you want to get. And that can be as simple as, you know, getting connection with, uh, you know, the cashier at the grocery store with a, like a, a polite conversation while you're checking out. This could be um, connection in a casual way with, you know, a group of friends or connection with, you know, someone you really respect, you know, around a shared thing like martial arts or, you know, playing music or what have you. Or this could be more personal connection. This could be a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone who really gets you. This could be, you know, intimate connection with someone who loves you, et cetera, et cetera, right? So there are all kinds of different ways to get connection, but it's important. We need connection, right? Um, 
and this is really what a lot of this points to. It's deeply resourcing to the nervous system, in my experience. This is where, in my opinion, you know, kind of this edge we're at between medium and acute resourcing, right? This is where a, a lot of, you know, the good therapy works and where a lot of like bad therapy fails, right? Like this is why a psychiatrist who sees you for 15 minutes and writes you a pill prescription is failing you because they are not resourcing you because you don't generally feel seen and heard by those people. You generally don't feel a sense of connection. You don't feel connected to, you don't feel, and therefore your nervous system can't get what it needs, which is that sense of safety, right? That sense of being resourced. And the resource they give you is a prescription for a pill and send you on your way, right? If we go a little bit deeper here into the most acute, we're really at the heart of how the nervous system regulates and uh, and what we really need. So what is regulation? Regulation is a return to that sense of well-being and centeredness and comfort and safety and that feeling that everything is okay and everything is all right in your nervous system, right? So this is really at the very heart of what we need to function properly, right? What we need to be okay, what we need to be happy, to be healthy, to thrive, et cetera, et cetera. This is at the heart of trauma work and trauma therapy. What is trauma work about? Is about restoring the nervous system's sense of regulation. That's what that's what we're up to here, right? That's that's the name of the game. You know, again, with psychedelic therapy, with you know, good, even good coaching can regulate, even a good conversation with a friend can regulate you. But all of this is pointing back towards what do I need in specific? And it's that feeling of well-being and comfort in my own skin again that I'm okay, that everything's okay, right? This is what we're after. So that's the most acute kind of resource that we're looking for. And there's kind of two layers to this, right? From my point of view. So generally speaking, I would say if we're looking at regulation as being the most acute form of resourcing, generally speaking, human beings are wired up for co-regulation, which, which means we are looking for someone else to interact with us in a way that helps us to regulate and feel that sense of safety, right? So this is how, of course, babies are wired up. We are born dependent. We are born with, you know, needs that we can't meet because we don't have motor function yet. And we don't have co conceptual, you know, maps of how to get our needs met yet. And we also have, you know, a, a need for connection so we need, you know, we have emotions as babies, right? We feel safe, we feel unsafe, we feel comfortable, uncomfortable. So we have a need to be regulated, but we don't know how to do that for ourselves yet. So we are born with a need for co-regulation. And this need for co-regulation is a little more broad, right? Because I can get co-regulation ideally from my parents or my parental figures or, or you know, kind of role models, those close to me in my life, family members, but also as we become older and we become more socialized and as we become adults, we can get co-regulation from all kinds of places, right? You could get co-regulation from a stranger. You could get co-regulation from, again, a good friend and, and a, just a good deep conversation. You could get co-regulation from, um, you know, uh, a social event, right? Or a concert or a festival or, um, you know, a retreat or a yoga class, et cetera. So there are lots of ways you can be co-regulated where someone can work with you and your nervous system to help bring you back to well-being and safety, right? I think what's even more acute, and this is really the thing that I think is missing in our society, and you know, the thing I really want to teach you, the skill that I think every person should have, and sadly most of us lack, is the the skill of self-regulation the skill of knowing how to return our own nervous system without being reliant on external stimulus or others to be able to return ourselves to that sense of well-being and safety and balance and wholeness and presence etc right so this skill of self-regulation 
is the most acute, it's the most specific, because in order to do that, you have to get into the specifics of where you're not feeling okay and specifics of what your body and mind and nervous system is feeling in the moment over and over and over. So this is where we get into therapeutic skills like tracking, you know, like deep attunement, like moment to moment kind of uh, paying attention to what's happening in the nervous system, which is where somatic therapy lives and where a lot of the really good therapeutic techniques are. Uh, and, and what this does is this regulates the nervous system by resourcing it, by bringing attunement and attention and awareness to what specifically is happening in our nervous system at the thought level, at the emotion level, at the body sensation level, at the meaning level, at the belief level, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so this is the most acute skill. This is also the rarest skill, right? Unfortunately, this should be common knowledge. This should be something everyone knows how to do. This should have been something that most of us internalized when we were raised properly, right? But unfortunately, what we see over and over and over is that, or what I see over and over and over, uh, let me know if you agree or disagree, is that you know most of us grew up without ever internalizing how to self-regulate, right? Which is why so many of us are dependent either on relationships or dependent on the internet or substances or food or what have you to regulate ourselves because we never learned how to do it for ourselves, right? So this skill of self-regulation is a very specific acute skill. It's detailed. It is highly interacted is highly moment to moment and at the same time i would say you know when you get that skill that is the thing the the being able to self-regulate or be really finely co-regulated that is the skill that will have the biggest impact on returning your nervous system most of the time not always most of the time back to a sense of centeredness and safety and well-being and wholeness, right? So this is both the most acute and potentially the most powerful is what I'm saying here. So this to me is resourcing. Like when people go, how do I resource myself? I've gotten that comment here on the channel. This is my answer. This is why I don't give like a simple, like one liner answer because resourcing is a whole, as you can see, a whole life project. It's about how you structure your life. It's about things as simple as, you know, what you do with your t your lifestyle and your time and how you eat and how you exercise all the way into the things you choose to do with your time, the, you know, the inputs that are more specific in terms of your practices or your supplements or whatnot, all the way down into the very kind of very personal connection and regulation skills, right? So this is something we're going to be talking about a lot more here on the channel because you know, a lot of what comes up, you know, whether you're doing just personal healing work or self-development work, you're like, why am I stuck? Usually it's because you're dysregulated and under-resourced in some of one of these areas is going to start to be the solution, right? Or for, even if we're looking at psychedelic therapy, right? If we look at psychedelic therapy, you know, the, the core skill is really about regulating people through these ways of dysregulation, you know, that come up on the medicine, right? The things that people start to remember or access, we, this is the skill we need is how to how do we self-regulate or how does a person get co-regulated through these waves and kind of correct, have corrective experiences over and over and over that sends safety signals to the nervous system. And then the person's nervous system internalizes that and boom, they've transformed something that was a block or an issue or what have you, right? So even with psychedelic therapy, you know, we want to have all this stuff in place. You want to have supplements in place. You want to have therapy in place. You want to have rituals and spiritual practices and meditation, feeling seen, all that in place. If a psychedelic therapist isn't helping you to access and develop all these things, I would say they're underserving you. Same with like a guide, right? This is this is important stuff. So hopefully this starts to answer the question for you of what regulation and what resourcing is and how to resource yourself. So, you know, hopefully the, the point of this video isn't to depress you. Hopefully you don't see this and feel bummed out and like, geez, I'm not doing any of these things, you know, no wonder, and then get negative. Hopefully this gives you a roadmap of things you can start to do to resource yourself. And again, what I would say is all of these cumul uh, excuse me, cumulatively add up to give you 
a more robust sense of being supported that gives you the strength to what do whatever it is you want to do heal grow change improve your life resolve that old trauma whatever the thing is the you need all of this stuff kind of in place and when people come to me and they're highly dysregulated and overwhelmed and confused about what their issues are and why they have what they have and what's been going on the answer is that they're under-resourced broadly speaking you know or else they wouldn't have the problem and that they need some of this something here right uh, there's again there's stuff i've left off the list here there's probably more and we could unpack it maybe certain things could be put in other places and blah 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 but generally it's something like this right and so i want you to start to think about one of the other things you know, we'll wrap the video with this i want you to start to think about what are the places in your life where you're under resourced and instead of just fixating on problems right on on what's wrong with me and why am i broken and how come i'm this way and what was the thing that happened to me and instead of fixing and, and trying to get specific on the problems start to think about and cultivate and develop your resources because and and i'll explain this there's there's technical neuroscience to back this up when we bring resources to problem states in the right way and there's a skill to that there's nuance to that when we bring resources to problems we transform the problems and they go away or they stop being a problem so that's my answer so hopefully now you understand a bit more about what it means to be resourced and how to resource yourself or some of the things you can start to do to resource yourself and we'll be talking about this more and more but i want to just kind of put this out there and offer this to you guys so let me know what you think does this resonate for you um does this hit home do you, have you had an aha moment with this video? Uh, do you disagree with something I'm said? Let me know. Uh, leave a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, speaking of resourcing oneself, I'm a little low blood sugar. I probably need to go eat. So I'm going to wrap the video here. I'll catch you guys soon in another video. Take care. Bye for now. Much love to all of you. And I'll see you soon.